So is it a common mistake that you see in climbers that they're just hanging for too long? I mean, people just love, like, people are incredibly connected to certain protocols, right? And, you know, like, changing people's habits and their opinions on that, if they're, you know, it's really hard to tell if you're getting a transfer from your training. Always very hard. Everyone knows that. You, like, go climbing and you feel terrible and you send a project. You're like, what the hell? I'm going to wear pink, like, a pink shirt next time because this time I sent, right? But right. you're going to attribute it to the training stuff, right? But... And so essentially what I'm what I've been doing is like taking all this information from like a one of my new mentors over the last year and like applying these well established like exercise science ideas to rock climbing and that just doesn't make sense. Doing a 10 second effort to increase my finger strength just does not make sense. That's a a misuse of the term strength and understanding the adaptations because we just try and make it look like a climb which is fine from like a fatigue resistance standpoint but that is that is not the same thing as strength training we're now um blowing up some habits that maybe some of us have had for many many years of trying to build strength with a 10 second hang or a seven second hang and we're saying okay three seconds two seconds whatever right basically try as hard as you freaking can and then stop trying and take a little break and then try again um so we're we're aligned on the time now let's talk about um, what we're weighting and and how we're engaging that weight or that resistance. So in terms of in terms of like if I was sitting and I was pulling down vertically on a scale on the tin deck on a twenty mil edge and I had something blocking my hips, pulling down as hard as I can. My numbers when I tested, I didn't actually show the video on that day, but my numbers were like 170 pounds. So that's more representative of the loads that I, if I'm sticking with a half cramp, that's more representative of the loads that would be used to calculate my hangboard maximum, <clears throat> right? And so right. then I would do that on both sides. It's about even, about 170, right? Okay. Conversely now, so that's my maximum. So whatever one, that, whatever that is times two, right? Then if I was standing on top of a platform and my knees were bent slightly and I was still using a half crimp, pushing into it, my numbers should be pretty similar. Because even though now I'm pushing with my legs, I'm still limited by the eccentric style muscle contraction of my finger flexors. And those numbers were also around 170 per hand. Right. So if we like do a zoomed in view of the first test pulling down, you would watch the middle two joints slowly be opening. Mm -hmm. The same thing from the floor, my joints are slowly opening, but it's still limited by how much I can yield or prevent the joint from opening. And it was about 170 pounds, same weight. And that would be so, the same as if you had 340 pounds hanging from a harness and two hands on a, on a hangboard. So I would have to take my body weight. You'd have to subtract your body weight. Right, right, right. But three, 340 total. If you're 170 yeah. and 170, so 340. So whatever your body weight minus 340 is, you'd strap. So I would do 180 pounds on top of my body weight. Got it. With two hands. And again, With the hands. hands would be slowly opening. Slowly opening. And I would just do that for like a couple seconds. All right, y'all. Just a quick shout out to today's awesome sponsor, which is Friction Labs. A chalk. Look at this stuff. They make the best of the best. And now in 100% recyclable packaging outside and inside. Look at that. It's so good. I've been using this chalk for a decade, y'all, because it just works. It feels amazing on my skin. I chalk up less. I think you guys are going to love it as well. You now get 20% more in this new eco-friendly packaging, and you get 20% off by hitting that link below using code STRUGGLE at FRICTIONLABS.COM. I love this stuff. Let's get back to the interview. Uh, what else did you test? So then I just loaded 170 pounds on a loading pin, and then I used the tension block, and I just lifted 170 pounds off the ground. And you could do that. You could do that. I lift. could do that. Yep. And I would do that for a stand up, set it down, a couple seconds, stand up, set it down, a couple seconds. I could probably do three reps of that, and then the fourth rep I would probably have, I'd probably be, my fingers would be obviously opening it up sooner and probably would fail that repetition. Okay. So you peg that at about the same uh, effort as the others then? So that one I would choose the weight that I actually tested because I don't have to account for my body weight. Where the fingerboard protocol, and then I went to a 20 mil edge on the tension block, which was dangling, which is less of a good tool than if it was fixed on a fingerboard, but they, mm -hmm. Mike stole my fingerboards for the Seco comp in, uh, 
in Chicago, so I don't have those, so I just hooked the block above me. But then I did a one-arm hang on a 20 mil edge with 10 pounds, which is 170 pounds. Got it. To really show that, like, like those numbers show that I should be able to do those loads, but for me, they're pretty much the same thing. So it doesn't really matter which one I use. It's more a function of like the actual practicality of doing it. But for me, hanging with my body weight with 180 pounds is just a gigantic pain in the ass. I would just never do that. It's just not worth it. It's too much of a hassle to set it up. It's not necessary. And so I could use either methodology and get stronger. But if you can go to one arm, it's just really easy to hang with one arm. And then did you also test the uh, locking out all of your muscles and just curling into like the block using the tin deck? And where does that fall with regard to strength building? Yes. So with that video, I tested the isolated finger strength. And then in a video, maybe a day or two before that or a post one or two before that, I showed and demonstrated that I could do that standing and curling up. I could also do that sitting and pulling down. I could also do that blocking my elbow against a chair or wall, pulling horizontally. It does not matter as long as I know what I'm trying to get out of it. And as long as I'm not trying to cheat the test, you know, like it doesn't really matter the position that you use. But the force was 50 pounds less. On those where you are isolating just the finger flexors and you're not engaging your shoulder, you're not engaging your legs, you're not, you know, trying to rip that thing off the, the floor. Uh, I'm assuming that number was lower than what you were getting when you were. So so how much lower and, and does it matter? It, it matters a lot and it was 50 pounds lower. So it was 120 pounds. Okay. And why does it matter a lot? Uh, because if I was going to... If I was going to eliminate like my upper body pull strength and I was going to try and isolate more muscle fibers, that's a methodology that takes away a lot of the extra stretch to the connective tissue around and at the ends of all my muscle fibers. So the easiest way to describe this is with doing other types of movements because climbing movements and the finger things is confusing. but if athletes think about doing their pull up one rep maximum, the pulling up part is the hard part. The lowering back down is not that hard. And so when I do a negative or when I do an eccentric muscle contraction, every individual fiber is stronger because there's a piece of connective tissue at the end of the muscle fiber that gets stretched with the muscle fiber. Mm -hmm. And so, but that doesn't mean that when I do a negative movement that I'm getting more recruitment at all. It just means that my muscles are more efficient with that movement.